Welcome to part 5 of week 7 of the class Neuronal Dynamics. In the previous part, I presented the spike response model with escape noise as a realization of a generalized linear model. Let's now talk about how to optimize parameters of such a neuron model. Here again our model. Input is filtered by a first filter kappa. This is this term over here. We inject a known input, it's filtered with this filter kappa, and that contributes to the membrane potential. Then this membrane potential is compared with a threshold, and uh, depending on the distance between membrane potential and threshold, spikes are generated stochastically, and these spikes are fed back via a filter eta which contributes to the membrane potential. So this feedback is shown here. The spike train is filtered with this filter eta, and that contributes to the membrane potential. So eta is something like the spike after potential. An experimentalist injects the current. So we have a known input, and at the same time, he observes the spike train. The spike train is known as well. Now the voltage, given the spike train and given the input, is just a linear convolution. It's linear in the parameters. Let me explain what this means. In practice, we work in discrete time. So this integral over past input with a filter kappa is transformed into a sum over time steps. So K is an index, the lower index here, and K runs from 1 to capital K. So K sub 1 would be this first entry. One time step later, I have K sub 2. The last entry is K sub K. This is like having a continuous filter shape, kappa of S, and we read out at discrete times. So, k sub 1 is proportional to kappa at 1 times dt, where dt is the time step. Now, what can we do with this kind of description? Well, I said already that the experimentalist injects a current into a real neuron and he measures the voltage. So, we have access to the spikes, that's the peaks over here, the action potentials, and we also have access to the voltage trace in between the spikes. So I call this voltage trace U data. Now, as a modeler, I inject the same current into my mathematical neuron model and using this convolution transformed into a discrete time summation gives me my model U of T. What we need to do is, we need to compare the two. We need to adjust the parameters such that U of t is as close as possible to the measured data. Now, let me come back to the notion of linear in the parameters. I know the current. The voltage of my model is just linear in the parameters. There's no square root of k. There's no k to the cube. It's just linear. And that's important. So here's my current. Now again, the experimentalist injects a current, but in his setup, typically it's a digital setup, so he injects current in discrete time steps. One time step might be 0.1 millisecond, something very short, or a little bit longer, one millisecond. So the current is a discrete sequence of times. So this would be, say, my moment t that I'm interested in, t, and uh, I have a current at this specific moment, let's call it tn, I have a current in this time bin, which is i sub n. And now we measure data. The data might be like this in this time step. 
Now, the current was different in previous time steps. So what we do in this formula is we take the current at time stem step n, n minus 1, and compare it and multiply it with a filter evaluated at 1. So k1 times current n minus 1. And then we look at the current at n minus 2. So this one here would be n minus 2. And take the filter at this moment here, k2. This is how we calculate the voltage at time n of the model. Now this is the model voltage. Here is the measured data voltage. What I would like to have is that the data voltage at time tn is as close as possible to the voltage to the model voltage. But the model, model voltage is this term here, comes from over there. Now this is true, this is my wish for tn, for this time point here. But that should actually be true for all different time points. The data is different in each time step. And it should be true for all time steps. So this index n runs over all the different time steps. Whereas the index k runs from 1 to capital K. The capital K is the end of the filter. k times delta t is the duration of the filter. Let's compare my data with my model. I sum over all time steps. E is supposed to be an error function. An error should be positive. That's the main reason why I square this. So whether the data voltage is larger than the model voltage or smaller than the model voltage, in both cases, after squaring, I get a positive error. Now let's plot this error here, this error, as a function of one of the parameters. For example, the parameter k sub 3. It's a function, e is a function of k1, k2, k3, and so forth. So just take out one of these, say k3, and I plot e as a function of k3, and it will look like this. And then I will choose the value k3, the optimal value, k3 opt, is the one where this function is at a minimum. Now, since the voltage is linear in the parameters, the square of the voltage is quadratic in the parameters. In particular, it's a quadratic function of k3. Just take this square and multiply it out and you will have terms of the form u data squared, then terms of the form u data times kk, say k3, and then you will have terms of the form k3 i n minus 3 squared, which means k3 is quadratic. So this function is quadratic in the parameters. And that means I can directly calculate the optimal value. Now sometimes Instead of writing these sums, it's more convenient to think of a vector notation. So here again, my current, i of t, and this would be my value, i at times n, and this would be my value, i at times n minus 1, and maybe this one, i at times n minus one, two, three, four. Okay? So let's take this summation as a vector product. I say I have this filter. My filter K is indeed a vector with entries K1, K2, up to K, lower index, capital K. And I multiply this 
with a vector xn. xn would be my value at times in, my current value at times n minus 1, my current value at times n minus k, and I made a mistake here. The vector starts at n minus 1 to be multiplied with k1. k1 is multiplied with n minus 1. So with this notation, I get u of tn is just my filter k as a vector times a vector xn. Now this was one of the vectors. xn corresponds to the time point n. But we have many different time points in this sum. So, for example, at time t equals k plus 1, I have the current at time k, k minus 1, k2, and so forth. At time k plus 3, I have the current at time k plus 2, k plus 1, and so forth. Now, all these different entries are assembled in the lines. And in this way, this whole formula becomes an exercise in optimization of a quadratic expression that includes matrices. So far, I just treated the input current and the filter k. And I constructed this matrix of inputs. I said earlier that the experimentalist also observes the spike times. The eta is not a linear filter. It can be treated just the same way. And we can have extra entries for the filter eta and observed spike times in the past. So the total voltage is just a generalized version of this one. Again, it remains linear in the parameters. It's linear in the parameters of the filter kappa. It's linear in the parameters of the filter eta. And therefore, we have a quadratic problem. Now, if we apply this in order to optimize parameters of the subthreshold potential of a real neuron, then we find a filter kappa, which looks like this. And in fact, it can be fitted just by an exponential function. This would be the filter of an inhibitory neuron. Here's the filter of an excitatory neuron. Again, an exponential fil filter with slightly different parameters. Now, if we extract the filter eta by this quadratic optimization procedure from the quadratic error function, then we would find a negative spike after potential for pyramidal neurons. Whereas inhibitory neurons have first a negative contribution, a hyperpolarizing spike after potential, followed by a depolarizing, a little bump, a depolarizing spike after potential. That's what we have seen so far is with a GLM, with a spike response model with escape noise, we can optimize parameters in a systematic fashion we can find the best prediction of the subthreshold voltage by solving a quadratic optimization problem, by finding the minimum of a quadratic error function. And therefore, straightforward procedures exist. But so far, our approach has been limited to the subthreshold membrane potential. Ideally, from a neuron model, we would also like to predict spikes. And that's next.